At the turn of the 18th century, the first industrial revolution ushered in widespread and lasting shifts in life and society. Hours, minutes and seconds became more relevant measures of time than sunrise and sunset. We moved from farm to factory and schools appeared primarily to serve the needs of the factory-based economy as populations moved from rural to urban centers to foster the creation of the modern nation-state. We're now in the fourth industrial revolution, a time of unprecedented scientific marvels and innovations such as geospatial technologies which are redefining life as we know it. In Jamaica, Geographic Information Systems, or simply GIS, when combined with other forms of geospatial technologies, are having a profound impact on how we live, work, and do business. Jamaica, GIS, and geospatial technologies, harnessing the power of wear. Satellite imagery and eye-in-the-sky drone capture of Jamaica the third largest English-speaking nation in the Western Hemisphere after the United States and Canada. Jamaica is a relatively small island with a high population density when compared with much of the rest of the world. For every square mile of Jamaican territory, there's an average of 263 people, making it the 51st most densely populated country in the world, according to UN estimates and projections. On land, in the air, and at sea, geospatial technologies are driving logistics and transportation in Jamaica. Kingston, the national capital, is a teeming mass of nearly a million inhabitants. A muscular metropolis sprawling into the Kingston Metropolitan Transport Region. People on the move via public buses, route taxis and private motor vehicles, connected by highways, bridges and roadways. At any given time, if one were to ask a question about a, a particular road, a particular bridge, uh, we should be able to locate. And how do we quickly do that? You reference a map. Who do we usually go to? the personnel in the Geographic Information System Unit. And so even something as simple as us having a, a road being closed or a detour being, 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 uh, being done, recently we had to do that in respect of the works that we are doing along Hagley Park Road and Constant Spring Road. Uh, the GIS team worked with the communication team in, in ensuring that maps were done, showing the different routes where persons, where we had to reconfigure um, the movements of, of, of traffic. We had to show people graphically how it is that they, they, they were to be using the roads. GIS can apply to anything. Their, their banks, JN has a GIS department that they use, you know. So GIS is just giving that spatial geographic information to any aspect of life and that, that can help anyone, anyone, anywhere. Just like when uh, Zika was happening, the Ministry of Health decided, yeah, we're going to do this. Right across the board, GIS helps NHD, NLA, all the departments can use GIS to integrate into the country. So like we could have one main thing that everybody goes and maybe get where plans are, zoning um, areas and stuff like that. Simple. Geospatial data development is a major policy thrust of the government through the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation in alignment with National Outcomes 9 and 11 in the Vision 2030 plan for strong economic infrastructure and a technology-enabled society. The National Spatial Data Management Division and the Land Information Council of Jamaica, comprising over 50 stakeholders drawn from public and private sectors and tertiary institutions under the chairmanship of Attorney at Law Alexander Williams, are focal points for policy implementation. Our focus is to drive uh, geospatial data development in Jamaica. Uh, the branch came 
around in the early 90s. Uh, it was formed to do exactly that. We support uh, business entities um, to get where they want to go in an efficient way. We want them to utilize the technology and the, the National Spatial Data Management branch is here to guide them. You just have to take up your phone and call and we will just provide all the information. We can assist with training. We can direct uh, them to the technologies that are out there that can support them. With respect to our GIS in schools program, that that program was started in 2002, and it started because the Esri gave us a million US dollars in software and training material in order to to develop the program. What we also did was to get members who were in the areas or even members of the council sometimes to go and help the schools and, and the staff in the, in the unit also went out to schools and the parishes and so to help do that work. They, um, they are continuing that program and as I say I think that's one of the areas where eventually if you want the children um, who are interested and community groups to use GIS to solve their problems. The pioneering work of Jacqueline DaCosta, the founder and former chair of the Land Information Council of Jamaica, was pivotal in laying the foundations for Jamaica's standing as the regional leader in GIS and geospatial technologies. She has inspired a growing cadre of young professionals in the field and trailblazing private sector players like Valerie Grant of Geotech Vision and Dr. Silburn Clark of Spatial Innovision who are providing cutting-edge services and solutions to the government and to businesses in Jamaica and across the Caribbean. From my perspective, GIS is a productivity enhancement tool. So it actually the it is there to help you, whether you're a government, a business, NGO, whatever your domain is, your business domain is. It is to help you to be more productive, more effective, more efficient. Empirical data suggests that roughly 80% of the data that a business uses on a day-to-day -day basis has this spatial component. Where people are, routes to get to places, effects and impacts of decisions you make on the ground. So from a from a, from a business point of view, it is, it is actually embedded. Geography is embedded in, in, in what businesses do. And to the extent that the business can identify that, see it, and then leverage it, then to that extent it, it matters to business. We have been providing innovative solutions to the geospatial market for the last 10 years. We pride ourselves on starting all of our engagements with a user requirements analysis, thus being able to provide a customized solution. So we're not one of those people who kind of give you a box and expect you to figure it out. We provide a solution that meets your needs. We are a regional company and we, we started out being that way. We have done uh, work in the health space where we've done HIV AIDS mapping in one country in the Caribbean so that they can understand where to better deploy resources so that they can combat um, that particular disease. That's one example. One other example is in the health spaces where we have also done a lot of vector control and as one of our clients put it, in the whole matter of the chick V, they were able to not apply a machine gun approach but a more sniper approach to really identifying where those challenges were. GIS and spatial technologies are essential tools which allow for the creation, visualization, integration and analysis of spatial data to understand relationships, patterns and trends. Beyond transportation and logistics, HART, Jamaica's National Training Agency, has been employing the technologies to plan training interventions for implementation in communities across the island, as well as to map training locations. When we speak to companies, employers, about their skill gaps, that the GIS application is one of those, comp use of the GIS application is one of those competencies that is 
increasingly being identified as lacking mm. among our workers. And right, right now, we're, we're at a point, point where we can, we can say, say we, we have, have resources, resources ready for the for training, training to come in. HART has a couple of locations that are, have, have, have been earmarked for the training. HART College of Innovation and Technology in Montego Bay, HART College of Construction Services, Portmore St. Catherine, Southwest Tibet, where Mr. Mr. Um, Bent is from, and Ebony Park in Clarendon. GIS is one of the areas which we are seeking to expand and we currently have a multimedia resource, a digital animation lab that has the computer resources, high-end computers. We're seeking to expand in those capacity to accommodate the software and technologies that is gonna be enabled successfully deliver of geomatics. The Spatial Data Management Division's mantra is developing and building minds through spatial technology. Words to live by as the government of Jamaica collaborates with stakeholders in the public and private sectors as well as key partners like HART to move the nation along the development continuum in the march towards developed nation status. When we really practically think about it, it's about the power of where. And I like to think everything happens somewhere. It's a well-coined phrase, it's been used by the UN quite a bit, but it's so true. If we think about something that did not have wear in it that we have done for the last 24 hours, we'd be hard pressed for it. If you drop the kids to school, it's located somewhere. You go to work, it's where. So the fact that wear affects so much of what we do, it means that we need the sort of technology that is built on location to help us to solve some of our most enduring problems. In our day-to-day -day lives, we are using location information sometimes even without being aware of it. So we, we talk about the fourth industrial revolution, or we talk about things like the Internet of Things. I like to think of it as the geography of the Internet of Things. Because if you think about the Internet of Things without that location element, then all the senses and everything else becomes useless. So location is mainstream. We are at the edge of where.